Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We are going to continue our study of forms. This time we are going to look at some drop downs and some radio buttons. So we're going to start with radio buttons. Um, to give you an example of radio buttons, we can just pull up the MDN docs for radio buttons. So let's go over here, MDN radio button. Make this big so we can see it. These are radio buttons right here, where you can select one option among a group. That's what they're used for. I'm sure you've seen those all over the place. That's just their name is radio buttons. So if you have any questions about radio buttons, just check the MDN docs. You can see there's tons of examples and all kinds of stuff, all kinds of information, how you can customize them. And that's, that's pretty much it. So to make your radio button isn't just another input or type equals radio. But now if I save and refresh, I got a radio button, but there's nothing, nothing there. It's just, just a button. So next step is to give it a label. So label four, and I'm going to call this, um, let's do Pepsi versus Coke, Pepsi, which means that now for the input, I have to give it an ID, ID equals Pepsi, type equals radio. So let's save and refresh. Still didn't work. Oh, because I'm a dumb dumb and forgot to put the actual text in there. Save and refresh, Pepsi. Now I can select it all as well. So let's go ahead and just copy this and make it into Coke. Coke, Coke, Coke. I'll go ahead and tell you this isn't going to work like we're wanting it to. So we got Pepsi and Coke, so it looks good. So I pick Pepsi, but if I pick Coke, it selects both of them. I don't want that. I want it to be one or the other. I want them to be exclusive. Which one do you like best? In order to do that, you have to give your inputs a name, and they have to be the same name. Name equals maybe drink. So name equals drink, because this tells the browser, hey, only one of these can be selected at a time. So now if I go back, it does both of them. So what did I do wrong? I did something wrong. Did I not save it? Let's refresh. I did something wrong. Oh, yep, there's my typo right there. I could have edited that out and made you think I'm some awesome coder, but this stuff happens all the time. So refresh, and now it should work fine. There we go, one or the other. The reason we're able to give them the same name is because only one of them will be selected at a time and submitted. You remember in previous video, I told you not to ever give inputs the same name when they're gonna be submitted. Don't do that because it makes it a nightmare to try and parse on the back end. You can do it with this because we know that only one will ever be submitted. We know that they're not gonna pick Pepsi and Coke. It's gonna be one or the other, and that's how the browser recognizes that. All right, so now we have our Pepsi or Coke radio buttons. Let's choose whichever one we like. Josh, I'll make pass, that's the password. Now this submit is gonna look a little weird. And we'll have to talk about in a second how you fix this. So you hit submit, doesn't do anything special, so it seems. But when we look at our URL, we've got username equals Josh, password equals pass, but drink equals on. What? What happened is the radio button says, oh, you have one of these selected. So it turned it on. So basically that's true or false. It's just a binary. So in order to actually get the data, you have to give your radio buttons a value. So if you come over here and value equals Pepsi, and then value equals Coke. Save and refresh, make this a bit bigger. Username Josh. Password is pass, and I, let's pick Pepsi this time and hit submit. Now if I look at my URL, drink equals Pepsi. So that's how you're able to get the data from here. Whenever you're using radio buttons, you have to include the value. You have to have that value for each option or else it'll just say on. That's pretty much it for radio buttons. So we're going to move on to drop downs. Now drop downs are created using the select tag. The select tag requires a name and an ID, so let's give it a name of, I don't know, month. Same for the ID. And then inside of these select tags, because select has an opening and a closing tag, you have to put options. So option value equals Jan, Jan. Might do it like that. Then option value equals Feb, Feb. So these are, my, these are the months. So let's go ahead and save and refresh, see what it looks like. And I've got two options, January or February. So if I submit this, Josh, pass, do Pepsi, now let's do Coke because I don't want to lie, February, submit, and make this big, month equals Feb. 
got all the other data but month equals February. The way that it got that is based on the value. So whatever the name here is the key and the value is the option they select from inside it down here. So we're still missing something right now. We need it to give this a label. So label for month, because we're getting the month from the ID right here. Label for month equals birth month. Refresh, and now we've got it. And we have a form that is accessible. You might, if you wanted to, come up here and do like, um, I don't know, an H3 or an H5, whatever, for favorite drink. Something like that. Or you could just do a P tag. Just to give a little bit more meaning to your form. And we're going to get into how to make these pretty and, and more, much better for the user, much better user experience once we get into CSS. But for now, we're just looking at the building blocks. That's how the drop downs work. One little trick you can do with um, drop downs is you can set a different value than what you show to the user. So you might show the user, it might be, um, like, how are you feeling? And you might do happy, neutral, or sad. And then the value might be three, two, or one. Or you might put happy, neutral, and sad. Save and refresh. How are you feeling? These are the three options you have. Might be neutral. Might be sad. But when I submit, well, these are required. When I submit and look at my URL, month equals sad, because I didn't change the name here. Feeling. Feeling. And the ID needs to be feeling as well. So, refresh, Josh, pass, Pepsi, submit. And I have feeling equals happy. Feeling happy, even though this doesn't say happy. One thing that a lot of developers forget to do, and it's really annoying for users, is they forget to have their cursor automatically start in this first box. So when I refresh this page, I can't just start typing because my cursor is not in this box. So what you want to do is you want to come into the first one, is generally the username, but whichever the first one you want, and do autofocus. That's another one that does not require a value, it's just a key. When I save and refresh this page, you'll notice my cursor is automatically there. So that way I can just start typing. I don't have to take my mouse and click up there. That's just kind of a quality of life thing. And it's really important for you to do that for your users because especially if they use the form a lot, they'll get very annoyed with you <laughs> before long. And that's pretty much what I want to talk about in this video. We talked about radio buttons and how to use them and how you have labels for each one and you need to set a value for each one or else it's just going to say on. We talked about drop downs and how you use the select tag to do that. You have to give it a name and you want to give it an ID. Same with the label. And then how you can set different values from what you show to the user if you so desire. And then we also talked about the autofocus attribute and how it's important to put that on the first form element if you want users to automatically focus there and be able to start typing as soon as they load the page. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll be happy to help. Thanks.